This fantastical odyssey explores the timeline of events concerning the Anunnaki. It is a story where legends of almighty gods, their offspring, and our distant past all converge in an epic saga stretching back hundreds of thousands of years. But first, a little background. In Sumerian lore, the Anunnaki emerge as celestial architects, descending from the heavens to shape the destiny of Earth. The very term, Anunnaki, resonates with cosmic significance, translating to, those whom Anu sent from heaven to Earth. These otherworldly beings, akin to gods in Sumerian mythology, played a pivotal role in the creation and procreation of Homo sapiens. Across diverse cultures and scriptures, the Anunnaki find varied epithets that echo their celestial descent. The term, Nephilim, rooted in ancient tongues, encapsulates the essence of their arrival, a descent to Earth, a landing that transcends mere terrestrial boundaries. In the sacred verses of the Bible, the Anunnaki are veiled in the enigmatic guise of Elohim, signifying these beings. This biblical moniker adds a layer of mystique to the divine identity, woven into the fabric of ancient texts. Across the vast expanse of linguistic diversity, the Anunnaki bear names that resonate with power. In Arabic, they are the formidable Jabarin, the mighty ones whose influence knows no bounds. The Aramaic script unveils their presence as the Gibberim, beings of might and majesty, casting a celestial aura over the cosmic narrative. Venturing into Egyptian mysticism, the Anunnaki find resonance as the Neteru, embodying the divine forces that shaped the ancient world. This Egyptian term, intricately connected to the Sumerian legacy, underscores the universality of their influence. Thus, in the kaleidoscope of ancient languages and mythologies, the Anunnaki persist as beings of otherworldly origin, the architects of humanity, and custodians of the cosmic balance. Their saga told through the rich stories of human culture, beckons us to unravel the threads of our existence, which is undoubtedly intertwined with the echoes of the divine. In the dawn of human record-keeping, the Sumerians stood as cosmic scribes, their cuneiform tablets etching the first chapters of the Anunnaki saga. It was the Sumerians who, with reverence and awe, chronicled the presence of these celestial architects. Within the hallowed halls of Sumerian wisdom, the Anunnaki gave their earthly pupils profound insights into the very fabric of the cosmos. They shared advanced knowledge, unraveling the mysteries of the solar system, its intricate dance of planets within and beyond our celestial neighborhood. The Sumerians became recipients of a cosmic curriculum, a syllabus that transcended earthly boundaries and delved into the divine tapestry that adorned the night sky. Their spacefaring mentors were not mere bestowers of wisdom, they were architects of civilizations. In the nurturing hands of these celestial guides, the Sumerians learned the sacred arts of city building, the alchemy of agriculture, and the secrets of crafting vessels that could defy gravity and traverse the skies. The Sumerians, once wanderers on the vast plains, now stood as architects of grandeur, their cities rising like monuments to the knowledge gifted to them. As the Sumerians etched their newfound wisdom onto clay tablets, they unwittingly became custodians of insights that transcended their age. The Anunnaki's teachings encompassed not just the rudiments of earthly existence but also included unlocking the cosmic code, revealing secrets of the solar system that, even in the modern era, echo with revelations scientists are only now beginning to grasp. Thus, the Sumerians, with their primitive stylus and clay, became heralds of a cosmic narrative, writing the tale of their benefactors, the Anunnaki, whose legacy would echo through the corridors of time, guiding humanity on a journey of enlightenment that transcends the boundaries of Earth and reaches for the stars. But this is only a tiny portion of the story. Now, let us return to the timeline, which is obtained mainly from archaeological discoveries unearthed in present-day Iraq and surrounding areas. While the discovery of ancient artifacts and ruins does play a role, most of the story comes from the Sumerian tablets. This extraordinary collection of ancient writings was etched into clay by the skilled scribes of Sumer, the earliest known civilization in Mesopotamia. The legacy of this writing system endured through the ages, predominantly owing to the clay tablets upon which it was inscribed. Yet, it was only in the 19th century that the enigma of cuneiform was unraveled, 
granting scholars the key to deciphering and comprehending the texts encoded in this ancient script. In some texts, the Sumerians attribute their knowledge to these gods, who, in their view, bestowed it upon them. Others are said to have been narrated to the scribes by the gods themselves. Now, let's get started. We have a lot of ground to cover, 450,000 years to be precise. An epic saga unfolds in the remote reaches of our solar system 450,000 years ago. Life is teetering on the brink of extinction for the occupants of an enigmatic planet known as Nibiru, a dire consequence of its dwindling atmosphere. As with all kingdoms, power struggles, jealousy, and conflicts are commonplace on this mysterious planet. At the heart of the first conflict lay the coveted kingship title and the intricate lineage of Nibiru's royal family. It was a legacy held dear by all, and the stakes were immeasurably high. In a perilous plot for supremacy, Alalu assassinated the previous king of Nibiru and became the supreme leader. Alulu ruled for over 32,000 years, which equates to a mere blip on planet Nibiru. He is eventually overthrown by the formidable ruler known as Anu. However, the resilient Alalu manages to escape the clutches of his oppressor by embarking on an interstellar odyssey aboard a magnificent spaceship. His journey leads him to a miraculous discovery, the beautiful blue orb known as Earth. As Alalu descends upon this newfound sanctuary, he is astounded by its untamed beauty and abundant resources. Here, he unearths a secret of immense cosmic significance, reserves of shimmering gold, a precious metal with the extraordinary ability to shield and preserve the fragile atmosphere of his forsaken home. A little background on the need for gold. To shield their planet from the perilous onslaught of ultraviolet rays, they needed to construct a safeguard in the form of a golden dome. This celestial shield, woven from the ethereal fabric of suspended gold dust particles in the atmosphere, became their ingenious solution to fortify the planet against the potentially harmful effects of the relentless ultraviolet onslaught. After discovering deposits of gold, Alalu reaches out across the vast cosmic expanse in a moment of courage and determination, sending a beacon of communication to the distant Nibiru. With the fervor of a hero, he beckoned for their help as the fate of their world hung in the balance. His call echoed through the cosmic void, a plea that would set in motion a celestial odyssey where heroes would emerge to bridge the gap between the stars. It was a summons of immense importance, a call to retrieve the fallen king and shape the destiny of Earth and the heavens. The tablets referring to these events read like this. In the ancient days of yore, Alalu, the regal figure, reigned as king in the celestial realms. Upon a magnificent throne, Alalu presided, and before him stood the mighty Anu, who was hailed as first among the gods. Anu would bow in reverence, placing the sacred drinking cup into Alalu's divine grasp. For nine counted periods, Alalu held sway as the celestial monarch of heaven. But it was in the ninth period that a momentous cosmic clash unfurled. Resolute and unyielding, Anu confronted Alalu in a battle that would alter the course of history. In the celestial struggle, Alalu faced defeat and was compelled to descend to the dark-hued earth. His reign in the heavens ended. Anu ascended to the heavenly throne, establishing a new order in the cosmic hierarchy. This is a story of cosmic exile and redemption, where a fallen ruler's quest for salvation unfolds against the backdrop of Earth's enigmatic allure and the captivating appeal of gleaming gold. It is a tale of two worlds colliding, one facing extinction and the other holding the key to salvation, bound together by a timeless thread of destiny. In his wisdom, Anu dispatched his son, Enki, to Earth, tasking him with verifying Alalu's claims. Thus, 445,000 years ago, a remarkable expedition unfolded as the Anunnaki descended upon Earth's pristine shores. This group of powerful godlike beings is said to hold all the secrets of the universe. A momentous cosmic struggle followed as Alalu, the exile, wrestled Anu, the rightful heir, for the kingship. Alas, Alalu was defeated and exiled once more. This time, he was banished to the distant realm of Mars. 
he was eventually laid to rest there by Anzu, a sentinel of the heavens, marking the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. As the sands of time whispered their secrets, Alalu's face came to rest on the Martian landscape, a haunting reminder of the epic cosmic saga. May the face of Alalu eternally cast its gaze toward Nibiru, the realm he once commanded, and toward the earth whose golden secrets he unveiled. The Earth mission continued under the visionary leadership of Enki. The group soon established a pioneering outpost known as Eridu, an extraordinary Earth station dedicated to the awe-inspiring task of extracting the precious essence of gold from the mystical waters of the Persian Gulf. In the shadow of Eridu's grandeur, the Anunnaki embark on a breathtaking endeavor where science and ancient wisdom merge, unlocking the secrets of Earth's vast treasures. Enki's vision propels them forward as they tap into the boundless potential of the Persian Gulf's waters to procure the life-giving elixir of gold, an act that will shape the course of history and the destinies of both worlds. It's a tale of the Anunnaki's unwavering determination to bridge the celestial realms with the terrestrial realms, forging an extraordinary legacy for future generations. Enki's character boasts a multitude of distinct traits, yet modesty remains an elusive quality. In narratives chronicling his dominion over Earth and his influence on his home planet, the accounts resonate with a tone of grandeur and authority. I am a force of nature, a great presence that spans the vast expanse of the Earth. As the sovereign of the land, I hold a central place in the hierarchy of rulers. My authority extends over foreign lands, and I am regarded as a guiding figure among the gods. In my role, I bring about prosperity and perfection, ensuring that the order of the cosmos is maintained. I stand as the keeper of the seals that govern the realms above and below, and I am revered for my wisdom and understanding, which I share with foreign lands. Working alongside An, the king, I oversee the administration of justice from the dais of An. With Enlil, I look out over the lands, playing a role in shaping the destinies of nations, particularly in the place where the sun rises. Ninhursig, too, cherishes my presence, and I have been graced with a name of honor from her. I hold the position of leader among the Anunnaki, born as the firstborn son of An. My influence is far-reaching, as I oversee the construction of sheepfolds and cowpens, ensuring abundance and prosperity. My domain is the Abzu, the marshlands of the Persian Gulf, where I have established my shrine and earned a name of honor. This shrine is a place of respite, a haven for abundant life, where nature thrives, and my rule is recognized. In this sacred realm, songs and incantations fill the air, and my barge, the crown, and the stag of the Abzu, carry me on delightful journeys. This is the cosmic legacy of Enki, the firstborn son of An, who illuminates the path of destiny with wisdom and might. Earth's climate gradually mellows 438,000 years ago and transforms, and a new chapter in the drama unfolds. More Anunnaki descend upon the flourishing planet, among them the enigmatic Ninhursig, a captivating figure with the unique title of Chief Medical Officer. She is not just any Anunnaki but holds a unique distinction as Enki's half-sister, a bond that intertwines their destinies in this grand adventure. Ninhursag's arrival promises healing and nurturing, for she possesses a profound understanding of life's mysteries and the well-being of all that inhabits the Earth. Her presence adds a mesmerizing layer to the unfolding saga as the Anunnaki community on Earth thrives and grows, shaping the world's destiny and intertwining their celestial heritage with the vibrant history of Earth's evolution. Four hundred and sixteen thousand years ago is a pivotal moment in the Chronicle. As the production of gold wanes on Earth, a momentous arrival occurs. Anu, the venerable patriarch, descends upon the planet's surface, accompanied by the heir apparent, the illustrious Enlil. Their presence heralds a significant turning point in the unfolding tale. With dwindling gold reserves, a decision is made to secure this vital resource by delving into the heart of southern Africa. In a twist of fate and tradition, the leaders determine the course of action through a cosmic lottery, and Enlil emerges as the commander of the Earth mission. In a bittersweet twist, Enki, 
the visionary scientist and original explorer of Earth, is tasked with venturing into the enigmatic lands of Africa, where ancient secrets are waiting to be unearthed. Enlil is clearly highly regarded, as is evidenced in these ancient texts. In the realm of heaven, he reigns as the prince, and upon earth, he stands as the chief, commanding both realms. Enlil, whose authority extends to the farthest reaches of existence, whose very word resonates with loftiness and sanctity, and whose pronouncements are etched in an unchangeable decree. He shapes destinies that reach the distant horizon, carrying the will of time. The deities of Earth willingly bow before him, while the celestial gods gracing our world humbly kneel. They stand in unwavering allegiance, following his sacred instructions. As Anu prepares to depart Earth, he is confronted by Enki, who is unhappy with the tasks he has been given. The cosmic drama takes an unexpected turn as the past clashes with the present, and the echoes of history reverberate in the face of uncharted frontiers. It's a story of power dynamics, exploration, and the enduring struggle for supremacy in the unknown realms of Earth's mysteries. With a voice that echoed through the cosmos, Enki declared his divine lineage, my father, the sovereign of the universe, has birthed me into the cosmic expanse. I am the fertile seed conceived by the great wild bull, the very firstborn son of Anu. Among the gods, I stand as the great brother, the cosmic heir, bearing the mantle of the first son of the divine Anu. Yet, his impassioned cries fell upon ears as unyielding as the celestial firmament, for the decision had been rendered. Anu embarked on his journey back to Nibiru, leaving a trail of destinies in his wake. Forty-five thousand years after the Anunnaki first touched down, seven thriving settlements have blossomed in the heart of the fertile lands of southern Mesopotamia, each playing a crucial role in the drama. Among them is the resplendent spaceport, known as Sippa, where the cosmos meets the Earth, and the heavens open up to welcome the future. Nestled amidst this burgeoning landscape is the Mission Control Center, a place of profound significance known as Nippur, where the space voyages are meticulously orchestrated and guided. Here, the threads of Earth's destiny are woven into the fabric of the cosmos. Amid these vibrant settlements, the metallurgical center of Shurupak stands as a testament to Anunnaki ingenuity. Here, the ores, brought from the enigmatic lands of Africa, are transformed into the radiant metal that fuels the dreams of both worlds. The raw materials make their way to these Mesopotamian hubs by stately ships traversing the seas from the mystical African continent. The refined treasures are then elevated to the heavens, where the tireless Igigi crew mans the orbiters. Outposts emerged on the rust-hued canvas of Mars and the enigmatic dark side of the moon. These stations served a clandestine and crucial purpose in a celestial choreography as intricate as the stars. As the precious gold veins of Earth yield their celestial bounty, a choreographed ballet unfolds. Like ethereal messengers, spaceships carried the coveted element from the Martian to the lunar surface. Once there, these colossal cylindrical spaceships, monuments to celestial engineering, undertook their cosmic duty. Laden with the essence of gold, they embarked on interstellar journeys, transcending the moon's gravitational dance. Their destination, the mother plane, the celestial behemoth known as Nibiru. These ships are conduits between Earth's riches and the distant home world of the Anunnaki. It's a tale of ingenuity, collaboration, and the intricate dance between Earth and the stars. Three hundred and eighty thousand years ago, in a bold and audacious move, Alulu's grandson rallied the support of the Igigi, aiming to claim dominion over the lush and vibrant Earth. A cosmic clash of ambitions ensues as the stage is set for a struggle of epic proportions. But as the celestial drama unfolds, it becomes clear that the destiny of Earth rests in the hands of the Enlilites, the steadfast guardians of the terrestrial realm. In the climactic conflict, known as the War of the Olden Gods, the Enlilites emerge victorious, their unwavering determination and wisdom prevailing against the tempestuous desires of Alulu's grandson. It is a tale of power, ambition, 
and the enduring triumph of those entrusted with the guardianship of the Earth as they secure the planet's destiny in the grand narrative. Amidst the fiery crucible of the gold mines, a celestial rebellion stirred 300,000 years ago as the Anunnaki rose in defiance, burdened by their toil. In the face of this turmoil, the brilliant minds of Enki and Ninhursig conjure a remarkable solution, the creation of primitive workers, a fusion of ancient humans genetically altered to shoulder the laborious tasks that once weighed down their celestial kin. I shall bring forth a humble creation, a being of simplicity. Man, shall be the name bestowed upon this primitive form. A primitive worker I shall fashion, tasked with serving the gods, ensuring their respite and comfort in the celestial realms. The task at hand was no small feat. Ninhursig embarked on a monumental endeavor, taking the female Homo erect is egg and carefully blending it with Enki's celestial seed. Her intricate genetic engineering work was to leave a mark, a distinct imprint of Enki's genes upon this nascent creation. This cosmic heritage would bestow the modern man with a divine essence, while the earthling genes added the earthly dimension. With precision, Ninhursig transplanted the fertile egg into the nurturing womb of the surrogate mother, Ninki. It was she who carried the developing fetus for a full ten months before Ninhursig orchestrated the grand moment of delivery. The newly formed workers became known as the Adam, a creation born from the very essence of Adama, the earth's soil, a true child of the earth itself. These newly created beings, equipped with dexterous hands, finely tuned to manipulate the intricate machinery of their mining endeavors, were a gift to Enki himself. They were endowed with the power of speech, their vocal cords attuned to communicate with precision. The evolution did not stop there, their once primal minds now bore a developed frontal lobe, enabling them to comprehend and execute commands with mastery. Their transformation extended even to their appearance, no longer resembling wild, hairy creatures, but instead, adorned with skin and hair akin to the divine gods themselves. With pride, Ninhursig proclaimed, the task you bestowed upon me has found its fulfillment. I have relieved you of the burdensome labor and placed it upon the shoulders of man, the worker. When you called for a companion in toil, I answered your plea, and I have now unshackled the yoke, granting you the precious gift of freedom. The primitive workers, endowed with newfound strength and resilience, gradually take over the arduous toil, freeing the Anunnaki from their laborious burden. The celestial overseer, Enlil, strikes like thunder, orchestrating a daring raid on the mines and transporting the primitive workers to the sacred realm known as the Eden, nestled amidst the cradle of Mesopotamia. In this fertile sanctuary, something extraordinary begins to unfold. The primitive workers, blessed with the gift of procreation, evolve and flourish, giving rise to a new chapter in the Earth's story. The Homo sapiens, born of the Earth and nurtured by the Anunnaki, begin to multiply, sowing the seeds of a wondrous future that holds the promise of untold mysteries and boundless potential. It's a saga of creation, defiance, and the emergence of a new chapter in the cosmic tapestry. Recently, Kazakhstani scientists conducted research suggesting that an advanced extraterrestrial civilization created life, dispersing it across diverse planets, with Earth being just one of their endeavors. According to their findings, encoded within our DNA is a program featuring two versions, a vast, intricately structured code, and a more straightforward or foundational code. The research team confidently asserts that the initial segment of our DNA code did not originate on Earth, presenting it as a verifiable fact. Moreover, they emphasize a crucial point. Genes alone fall short of elucidating the evolutionary process, suggesting that there's more at play in this intricate game. In the words of these scientists, sooner or later, we must come to terms with the notion that all life on Earth carries the genetic code of our extraterrestrial cousins, and that evolution is not what we think it is. These scientific revelations echo the contentions of individuals and observers who claim to have encountered aliens resembling humans. The presence of human-like aliens potentially contributing genetic material adds a compelling layer to our understanding of the evolution of our species. The 
Earth's history took a chilling turn 200,000 years ago, and a new glacial period descended upon the world, casting a frosty veil over life on this planet. In the face of this icy grip, the planet's inhabitants find themselves in a state of regression as the natural world undergoes a profound transformation. Once vibrant landscapes are blanketed in icy splendor and the ebb and flow of life retreats into the cold embrace of the glaciers. Once teeming with diversity and vitality, life faces the relentless challenges of an age defined by icy stillness. Yet, even amid this glacial reverie, a quiet resilience exists as life adapts to the changing rhythms of the Earth. It is a time when the planet's very essence seems to hold its breath as if preparing for rebirth and renewal, hidden beneath the frozen surface, waiting for the moment when the ice retreats and life's flame rekindles with newfound vigor and creativity. With the passage of eons, the Earth awakened from its icy slumber 100,000 years ago as the climate began to warm once more. It is a time of renewal and transformation, where the planet's vitality surges back to life, and the frozen landscapes yield to the gentle touch of spring. Yet, as the Earth blossoms, a curious union unfolds, much to the growing annoyance of Enlil, the celestial overseer. The enigmatic Anunnaki, also known in biblical tales as the Nephilim, find themselves captivated by the daughters of humankind. This unconventional intermingling of celestial and earthly beings introduces a captivating layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. It is a story of love and intrigue that transcends the boundaries of cosmic heritage, where the destinies of the Anunnaki and humanity become ever more intertwined as the world revives around them. a celestial cataclysm known as the Ecosation of Earth, descended upon the world 75,000 years ago, casting a chilling shadow and heralding the arrival of a new ice age. As the Earth's climate plunges into the depths of frigidity, regressive forms of humanity traverse the frozen landscapes like echoes from a distant past. Amidst the icy desolation, a resilient species endures, the Cro-Magnon Man. In this frozen tableau, the story of Earth's history unfolds, where the echoes of ancient civilizations intermingle with the tenacity of the Cro-Magnon people. It's a narrative of survival, of life's enduring ability to persevere even in the most unforgiving circumstances, as the world weathers the storm of a new ice age. Forty-nine thousand years ago, in a moment of profound transformation, Enki and Ninhursig, the visionary creators, bestowed a remarkable gift upon humans. An Unaki lineage, elevating them to positions of authority and leadership in the vibrant city of Shurupak. The once subordinate humans now stand as rulers, their destinies intertwined with the cosmic tapestry. This celestial decree does not go unnoticed by Enlil, whose wrath and jealousy ignite like a cosmic firestorm. Enraged by the newfound status of humanity, he plots a dire course of action that seeks to bring about the downfall of humankind itself. As the cosmic drama unfolds, it is a tale of power, jealousy, and the intricate dance between gods and humanity. The clash of opposing forces sets the stage for an epic struggle that will define history, as the stars themselves bear witness to the battle for supremacy and the destiny of humanity. Thirteen thousand years ago, thirteen thousand years ago, a chilling revelation dawns upon Enlil's sharp mind in the celestial council chambers. He learns that the impending passage of Nibiru, Earth's cosmic companion, will unleash an unprecedented tidal wave of immense proportions. Recognizing the magnitude of this impending calamity, Enlil makes a solemn and binding decree. Gathering the Anunnaki, he calls for an oath, a pact of secrecy, which all of them must swear to uphold. Their voices echo through the heavens as they pledge to keep the impending catastrophe hidden from the eyes of humanity. It's a cosmic pact, a solemn promise, as the gods and their celestial kin commit to shielding humankind from the impending cataclysm, all while bearing the weight of this immense secret in the depths of their divine hearts. The story takes on an aura of mystery as the world's fate hangs in the balance, 
and the Celestial Guardians stand resolute in their determination to let humanity suffer the impending tidal wave. In a moment of profound decision, Enki, driven by compassion and foresight, breaks the solemn oath of secrecy. With a heavy heart, he turns to Ziasudra, known in later tales as Noah, and says, Come forth, stand beside the ancient wall that guards my left, and lend me the sanctuary of your ears. Allow my words to cascade upon you like the wisdom of ages, may the resonance dwell in your understanding. With profound intent, I declare a cosmic proclamation, a deluge, like the cosmic tears of gods, shall cascade over the cities and the sprawling expanse of the land. The decree, irrevocable as the celestial order, resonates, a decision etched in the cosmic annals, a command from the celestial assembly that echoes through the fabric of existence. Let this truth settle in the recesses of your consciousness, for the destiny of humankind is woven into the threads of this cosmic decree, a verdict that reverberates through the cosmos and shall not be undone. Enki tasks Ziasudra with a divine mission, to construct a remarkable submersible ship. This vessel is to become a beacon of hope amidst the impending deluge, a sanctuary for life in a world about to be submerged. As the deluge surges across the Earth's surface, the Anunnaki observe the total devastation from the vantage point of their orbiting spacecraft. The waves swept across the land, an all-encompassing force that erased the celestial cities of the Divine, along with their mission control center and the Grand Spaceport, entombing Eden beneath layers of silt and mud. It was a cataclysmic reset. In the aftermath, Ninma, also known as Ninhursig, was engulfed in sorrow, weeping like a woman in the throes of childbirth. Her lament echoed through the celestial expanse, recounting the devastation wrought by tidal waves that had swept away all life. Beside her, Anana, a witness to the cosmic tragedy, joined in the mournful chorus, grieving and groaning. Usually mighty and resolute, the Anunnaki were reduced to insignificance in the face of such relentless fury and immense power. They, too, joined the lament, recognizing the profound loss of human lives. Fruits, vines, and the very essence of existence lay buried and obliterated, a poignant reminder of nature's unyielding force that left the cosmic onlookers in solemn reflection. Emerging from the watery chaos, the colossal ark, tossed and turned by the tempest's fury, was adrift on the vast expanse of the great waters. And then, like a celestial overture, the radiant sun emerged, its golden tendrils spreading across the canvas of heaven and earth. Light, the herald of a new cosmic dawn, embraced the revitalized world, casting aside the shadows of the tempest that had, for a brief moment, held dominion over the celestial order. A cosmic renaissance was required for the rebuilding of all that once thrived. The deluge marked a pivotal turning point, reshaping the destinies of gods and mortals. Earthlings, crafted to toil and serve the divine, were now elevated by the gods in a world scarred by catastrophe. No longer mere subjects, they emerged as junior partners in the rebirth of a ravaged planet, their destinies entwined with the forces that once ruled them. In the aftermath, a celestial council gathers. Enlil, moved by the persistence of humanity, grants the survivors a precious gift, the knowledge of implements and seeds. In the highlands, a new chapter in the story of Earth begins as agriculture takes root, breathing life back into the world. With his nurturing spirit, Enki takes on the role of domesticating animals, fostering a new bond between man and beast. It is a tale of sacrifice, renewal, and the enduring resilience of humankind as they embark on a journey to rebuild and rediscover a world that has been forever transformed by the Great Deluge. Ten thousand five hundred years ago, in the aftermath of the Great Deluge, the descendants of Noah were granted their own realms in a world reborn. Three regions are apportioned to them, each with a unique destiny. Ninurta, the distinguished offspring of Enlil, takes on the formidable task of taming the rugged mountains and harnessing the mighty rivers. His laborious efforts transformed Mesopotamia into a hospitable and thriving land where life flourished again. Meanwhile, the ever-resourceful Enki reclaims the bountiful Nile Valley, 
orchestrating the drainage of the waters and engineering intricate waterways in Egypt. He laid the foundation for the Nile Valley realm in this strategic transformation. However, this coveted domain would later become the epicenter of conflicts among the Anunnaki, vying for supremacy and control over the enigmatic land of Egypt. Amidst this earthly renaissance, the Sinai Peninsula remains in the hands of the Anunnaki, retained as a vital post-diluvial spaceport, a gateway between Earth and the cosmos. A control center is established atop the sacred Mount Moriah, destined to become the future Jerusalem. From this celestial hub, the Anunnaki continue to watch over the unfolding events of the world, their presence a beacon of guidance and cosmic connection. It is a story of reclamation, renewal, and the harmonious coexistence of humanity and celestial beings in the wake of a world-altering catastrophe. Nine thousand seven hundred and eighty years ago in the ancient land of Egypt, the illustrious Ra, also known as Marduk, the firstborn son of Enki, orchestrates a momentous decree. With a cosmic wisdom that resonates through the ages, he divides the dominion over this enigmatic realm between two exceptional beings, Osiris and Seth. Osiris, a symbol of life, abundance, and renewal, is chosen to govern over the fertile soil of Egypt. His reign is marked by prosperity and the natural rhythms of the land. Seth, a figure of strength and power, is entrusted with the guardianship of Egypt's more turbulent and formidable domains. His rule encompasses the desert and the untamed forces of nature. Egypt finds harmony in this celestial act of balance as these two influential deities guide the land, each with distinct gifts and responsibilities. It's a tale of duality, balance, and the cosmic artistry of Ra in shaping the destiny of Egypt and its people. In a startling turn of events, Seth, the formidable guardian of Egypt's more challenging realms, seized the reins of power 9,330 years ago and committed an act that sent shockwaves through the hierarchy. He takes hold of Osiris, the benevolent ruler, and dismembers him in a moment of unrelenting ambition. With this shocking act, Seth assumes sole dominion over the Nile Valley, casting a long shadow over the land. In the wake of this tumultuous coup, the once harmonious land of Egypt is plunged into an era of turbulence and uncertainty. The heavens themselves bear witness to the profound transformation that has reshaped the destiny of this ancient realm. It's a story of power, betrayal, and the unyielding forces of change, as Egypt's fate is irrevocably altered by the audacious actions of Seth, and the echoes of this celestial drama resonate through the annals of time. In a timeless tale of filial devotion and vengeance, 8,970 years ago, Horus, the son of Osiris, embarks on a momentous quest to avenge his father's dismemberment, setting the stage for the First Pyramid War. His heart, filled with unwavering determination, guides him as he seeks justice and restoring his family's honor. Horus and Set engage in a monumental aerial battle that painted the Egyptian skies with celestial fervor. Amidst the ethereal dance, Horus emerged triumphant amidst the winds of cosmic warfare. His wings of divine grace cut through the expanse, and the cosmic forces aligned in his favor. The skies echoed with the resounding victory of Horus, the triumphant harbinger of a new cosmic order. Amidst the turmoil, Seth, the enigmatic antagonist, flees to the distant lands of Asia, where he seizes control of the Sinai Peninsula and the sacred Canaan region. His relentless ambition knows no bounds as he forges a new domain beyond Egypt's borders. The conflict between Horus and Seth becomes an enduring legend, a cosmic struggle that shapes the destiny of not just Egypt but the lands beyond. It is a narrative of valor, revenge, and the unyielding pursuit of justice as the echoes of the First Pyramid War reverberate through the sands of time. Amidst the backdrop of cosmic intrigue and rivalry, a palpable tension brews 8,670 years ago as the Enlilites take a stand against the control of all the celestial facilities held by the descendants of Enki. 
This monumental clash ushers in the era of the Second Pyramid War, a battle that will redefine the course of history. In the wake of this epic conflict, the valiant Ninurta emerges victorious, and the Great Pyramid is stripped of its celestial equipment, marking a turning point in the balance of power. As the cosmic dust settles, Ninhursig, the half-sister of Enki and Enlil, steps into the role of peacemaker, convening a reconciliation conference. At this gathering, the division of Earth is reaffirmed, and a new order is established. In a pivotal shift, rule over Egypt transitioned from the Ra Marduk dynasty to the enlightened reign of Thoth. The radiant city of Heliopolis rises as a beacon of knowledge and wisdom, a substitute for the celestial facilities, signifying a new era of harmony and cooperation. This grand narrative weaves together the threads of rivalry, diplomacy, and the enduring quest for equilibrium as Earth's legacy unfolds in the tapestry of time. The Anunnaki established a network of vital installations 8,500 years ago to safeguard and maintain their celestial outposts at the gateway to the space facilities. Among these enigmatic strongholds, Jericho stands as a sentinel of cosmic connections, where the terrestrial and celestial realms converge in an intricate dance of power and purpose. In the heart of Jericho, the guardians of the facilities stand watch, ensuring the seamless operation of their earthly infrastructure. The story unfolds as a harmonious fusion of history and myth, where the echoes of ancient wisdom resonate through the corridors of time. Amidst the tranquil embrace of an age defined by peace, the Anunnaki bestowed upon humanity a precious gift 7,400 years ago, a wealth of new knowledge and advancements that heralded the dawn of the Neolithic period. This Enlightenment era is marked by the blossoming of human civilization and the wondrous achievements of our ancestors. In the fertile lands of Egypt, demigods rise to power, their rule an embodiment of the divine and the earthly, bridging the celestial and terrestrial realms. Their wisdom and leadership guide the thriving civilization as it flourishes under the benevolent gaze of the Anunnaki. It is a story of progress, enlightenment, and the harmonious coexistence of gods and mortals, as the Neolithic period emerges as a beacon of human achievement, and the legacy of ancient wisdom endures through the annals of time. A profound transformation in the bond between humanity and the divine unfolded 5,800 years ago with the establishment of humanity's earliest high civilization in the cradle of Mesopotamia. Urban civilization unfurled like a majestic tapestry as the Anunnaki rekindled the flame of the olden cities. Eridu and Nippur rise from the sands, their foundations echoing with the whispers of ancient times, marking the dawn of a new era. In a momentous chapter of Earth's history, Anu, the revered patriarch of the Anunnaki, graces the planet with a pageantful visit. His arrival is celebrated in grandeur, and a new city, Uruk, Arek, takes shape in his honor. This magnificent metropolis is a testament to Earth's connection to the heavens. A tablet from the Uruk archive gives us a glimpse into the grandeur and splendor of Anu's momentous state visit emerges. Though the tablet bears some damage, we can glimpse the magnificent ceremonies, beginning with Anu and Antu gracing the temple's courtyard. In a meticulously ordered procession, the gods lined up just as they had before, both ahead and behind the bearer of the sacred scepter. The protocol then guided their path. Descending to the exalted court, they turned their gaze toward the divine Anu. The priest of purification poured a libation over the scepter, and the scepter bearer stepped forth, taking their seat. In the heavenly court of Anu, Papsakal, Nusku, and Shala found their distinguished places. As the evening moved on, a sumptuous meal of assorted drinks and delectable appetizers graced the gathering, and an astronomer priest ascended to the pinnacle of the towering temple. His vigilant gaze was directed towards the celestial canvas, scanning for the emergence of the planet known as the Great Anu of Heaven. Once the cosmic alignment was met, he commenced the recital of sacred compositions, to the one who radiates brilliance, the celestial realm of Lord Anu, and, behold, the image of the Creator ascends. In a tender gesture, 
Anu designates the temple of Uruk as the cherished abode of his beloved granddaughter, the radiant Inanna, also known as Ishtar. It becomes a place where earth and the celestial realms intertwine, where the divine and earthly dwell harmoniously. This is a narrative of rebirth, grandeur, and the enduring legacy of the Anunnaki as they weave the story of Earth's ancient cities and their cosmic connections in a symphony of history and myth. In a profound moment of cosmic evolution, the mantle of kingship was bestowed upon humanity 5,760 years ago, a divine gift that ushers in a new era of order and structure. Under the vigilant guardianship of the noble Ninurta, Kish emerges as the first capital, a shining beacon of this nascent civilization. In the hallowed city of Nippur, the essence of time itself is formed as the calendar is meticulously crafted, marking the passage of days and seasons. It becomes a testament to humanity's enduring quest for understanding the rhythms of the cosmos. Civilization blooms like a magnificent desert flower in the heart of Sumer, the first region, where the human spirit intertwines with the extraterrestrial. It's a narrative of awakening, enlightenment, and the radiant potential of humanity as they chart their course into the future. In the heart of Sumer, a momentous transition unfolded 5,450 years ago as primacy was transferred to the watchful Nanar, also known as Sin. His presence illuminates the ancient land, guiding the people with celestial wisdom and grace. In the grand city of Babylon, the illustrious Marduk, a figure of immense influence, proclaims it the gateway of the gods. This majestic city rises as a beacon of divine connections, where earth and the cosmos entwine in harmonious union. However, a fateful incident unfolds, forever etched in history as the Tower of Babel. As humanity's ambition reaches for the heavens, the Anunnaki, guardians of earth's destiny, intervene. In their wisdom, they confuse humanity's languages, creating a cacophony of tongues that scatter people across the earth. This defining moment, just 3,450 years ago, marks a cosmic turning point in the human narrative, where the boundaries between the celestial and terrestrial are redrawn, and the Tower of Babel stands as a symbol of both ambition and the enduring power of the divine. Frustrated by the thwarting of his ambitious coup, Marduk retreats to the ancient land of Egypt. Here, he weaves a scheme to depose the wise Thoth, seizing control of his dominion. In a twist of fate, his actions lead to a tragic incident, the accidental demise of Dumuzi, his younger brother who had been betrothed to the radiant Anana. Marduk's actions come at a heavy cost, as he is imprisoned alive within the depths of the Great Pyramid, where his divine essence is cloaked in shadows. Yet, Marduk's indomitable spirit perseveres, and he manages to find freedom through an emergency shaft, leading him into a self-imposed exile. This is a story of ambition, tragedy, and the relentless quest for power, as the cosmic drama unfolds with Marduk's exile from the heart of ancient Egypt, echoing through the annals of time. After three centuries of tumultuous chaos, a long-awaited era of stability and unity dawns upon the land of Egypt 5,100 years ago. The installation of the very first pharaoh in the magnificent city of Memphis marks a turning point in history. It heralds the birth of a civilization that will flourish in the second region. In the shadow of the mighty pyramids and along the serene banks of the Nile, civilization takes root and blossoms with a vibrancy that echoes through the sands of time. It's a tale of renewal, order, and the resilient spirit of the people who come together to build a thriving society in this cradle of human history. With a cosmic shift in the annals of Sumer, the seat of kingship was transferred to the vibrant city of Erech 4,900 years ago. Here, the destiny of this ancient realm finds a new home, a testament to the ever-evolving tapestry of history. The radiant and resolute Anana is bestowed dominion over the enigmatic third region, presiding over the Indus Valley. Under her watchful gaze, the Indus Valley civilization embarks on a remarkable journey, 
a flourishing saga of innovation and cultural richness. This tale unfolds with an air of transformation and the enduring legacy of humanity's ceaseless evolution as new realms and dominions are established and the cosmic thread of history continues to weave its intricate patterns. In the ancient cradle of Sumer 4,650 years ago, the royal capital ebbs and flows like the tides, ever shifting through the corridors of time. The once glorious institution of kingship, once a beacon of power and authority, begins to wane, its grandeur fading. And Lil, the celestial overseer, watches over the land patiently, but his tolerance wears thin as the human multitudes become increasingly unruly and turbulent. The heavens themselves witness his growing frustration as the balance between the divine and the mortal world stands on the precipice of change. This is a narrative of shifting powers and the tumultuous dance of authority as the enduring saga of Sumer continues to evolve, with the heavens and earth intertwined in an eternal cosmic drama. In the heart of Mesopotamia 4,731 years ago, a passionate love blossoms between the radiant Inanna and the formidable Sharukin, known to history as Sargon. Together, they embark on a grand journey, and in their quest to redefine the world, Sargon establishes a new capital city, Agade, marking the birth of the Akkadian Empire. Sargon unveils the enigma of his extraordinary origins in a text titled The Legend of Sargon, I am Sargon, the indomitable sovereign of Agade. From the womb of a high priestess, my mother, I emerged. My father's identity is unknown. Concealed in secrecy, she bore me into the world, placing me in a cradle of rushes, sealed with bitumen, casting me upon the river's gentle current. Yet, the river cradled me, refusing to surrender me to the depths, guiding my destiny to Aki, the irrigator. In the rhythm of drawing water, Aki lifted me from the liquid embrace in a moment of providence. I flourished under Aki's nurturing wing and was designated as his son. While cultivating the fertile soil, the goddess Ishtar, Anana, graced me with her divine favor. For four and fifty years, I donned the regal mantle, steering the course of destiny for the black-headed people under my reign. Four thousand three hundred and sixty-one years ago, Sargon showed his ambition knew no bounds as he aimed to extend his dominion over the four regions. Sargon, the illustrious, commanding overseer, of Anana, held not only this esteemed title but also bore the honorific mantle of the anointed priest of Anu and the great regent of Enlil. In his own words, Sargon attributed his exalted position of lordship and kingship to the divine decree of Enlil. As Sargon embarked on a journey into the western realms, venturing toward the mid-Euphrates and the Mediterranean coast, where the dominion of Adad prevailed, he engaged in profound communion with the gods. Sargon prayed before the divine entity in a sacred moment, seeking favor and guidance. In response to his devotion, the god bestowed upon him the upper regions of Mari, Yamal, and Ebla, extending his realm to encompass the cedar forest and the lofty silver mountain. This divine gesture echoed through the winds and waves of time. However, Sargon, the venerable ruler, committed a grave error in the twilight of his years. Driven by an unusual impulse, he transported soil from Babylon and erected a new Babylon beside Agade, altering the sacred landscape. For this sacrilege, the mighty Lord Marduk, angered by Sargon's transgression, unleashed a punishing famine upon his people. Marduk severed the ties between the people and Sargon from the eastern horizons to the western realms, casting a veil of unrest upon the aging sovereign. As punishment, Sargon found no respite, haunted by the weight of divine displeasure. Eventually, after a reign that spanned 54 years, the once mighty ruler passed into the annals of history, leaving behind a legacy marked by glory and the consequences of a fateful misstep. Sargon's crime sparked renewed conflict between the enigmatic deities Marduk and Anana. The battle unfolds with cosmic intensity until a voice of reason emerges. Nergal, the wise brother of Marduk, journeys from the distant lands of South Africa to Babylon. 
His persuasive wisdom convinces Marduk to leave Mesopotamia, ending the chapter of rivalry and paving the way for a new era of equilibrium in the ancient land. It's a story of love, ambition, and reconciliation as the destinies of gods and mortals intermingle in the ever-evolving epic of Mesopotamia. Naram Sin, a resolute ruler, took his place on the throne of Akada 4,291 years ago. Guided by the fiery and warlike Inanna, he embarks on an audacious journey of conquest that redefines the boundaries of the known world. With Inanna's martial prowess at his side, Naram Sin boldly penetrates the enigmatic Sinai Peninsula, pushing the boundaries of the known world further than ever before. Their expedition takes them to the sacred lands of Egypt, where the drums of war resonate as they invade the ancient realm. This is a narrative of ambition, courage, and the relentless pursuit of power, as Naram Sin and Inanna's legendary campaign rewrites the maps of history and marks a turning point in the annals of civilization. Resolute and ambitious Inanna seized power in the heart of Mesopotamia 4,255 years ago. Her rise to authority marks a profound shift in the balance of cosmic forces as she challenges the established order. In response to Inanna's audacious defiance, Naram Sin dares to challenge the ancient city of Nippur, a symbol of the celestial hierarchy. Their tumultuous clash escalates to a point where the great Inunaki, guardians of the divine order, decide to intervene. In a cataclysmic act, they obliterate the city of Agade, a testament to their authority. Anana manages to evade their judgment, escaping the fiery tempest. The aftermath of this epic confrontation witnessed the lands of Sumer and Akada being occupied by foreign troops loyal to Enlil and Ninurta as the echoes of this celestial battle reverberate through the annals of history. It's a narrative of ambition, conflict, and the enduring power of the divine beings who shaped the destiny of the earth. the radiant Sumerian civilization ascended to even greater heights 4,200 years ago, guided by the enlightened rulers of Lagash. Their wisdom and vision breathed new life into the ancient land as Sumer reached a pinnacle of cultural and intellectual achievement. At the heart of this flourishing civilization, the revered Thoth extends his celestial hand to assist King Gudia, a visionary monarch. Together, they embark on a wondrous project, crafting a magnificent ziggurat temple dedicated to the noble Ninurta. The story reads like this. Gudia found himself the recipient of divine guidance, receiving two distinct sets of instructions to shape the destiny of a sacred temple. One set emanated from a goddess, who, with celestial grace, held the tablet of the auspicious star of the heavens in one hand and, in the other, a holy stylus. With this sacred instrument, she pointed Gudia toward the direction of the favorable planet, determining the temple's divine orientation. The second set of instructions, veiled in mystery, came from a god unfamiliar to Gudia, Ningishsida. This enigmatic deity presented Gudia with a tablet crafted from precious stone, a repository of the temple's architectural essence. Ningishsida, the great god who intricately designed foundations, emerged from obscurity in Gudi's era only to fade into the shadows as a phantom god and a mere echo in the later epochs of Babylonian and Assyrian times. Once entrusted to Gudia by this elusive deity, the divine plans became a testament to the transient nature of gods and their place in the annals of human memory. This temple is a testament to the harmonious fusion of earthly and cosmic influences, a beacon of spiritual and architectural splendor. in the ancient city of Nippur, where the whispers of history intertwine with the cosmic realm, a figure named Terah, Abraham's father, entered the world 4,193 years ago. He emerges from a priestly royal lineage, his birth heralding the continuation of a legacy that reaches deep into the enigmatic corridors of time. Terah's life is destined to reflect the rich traditions and celestial connections of his ancestral line, setting the stage for a story that carries the weight of earthly and cosmic destinies.
in the land of Egypt 4,180 years ago, a profound division took root as the followers of Ra, also known as Marduk, established their dominion in the fertile southern realms. The southern territories pulse with the vibrant legacy of the radiant sun god. In stark opposition to the followers of Ra, the pharaohs, guided by their own beliefs and principles, rose to claim the throne of Lower Egypt in the Northern Territories. Their rule symbolizes the enduring duality and cosmic harmony as the land of Egypt flourishes under the reign of differing celestial ideals. The illustrious Enlil and the valiant Ninurta find themselves increasingly distant 4,130 years ago, as their central authority in Mesopotamia begins to wane. The strength of the guidance lessens, and the land faces a period of uncertainty. With her fiery determination, Anana makes valiant attempts to reclaim the kingship for Erek, the city she holds dear. However, her endeavors are met with only fleeting success as the ebb and flow of authority continues to shift in this celestial dance of power and destiny. This is a narrative of change, ambition, and the ceaseless cycle of authority as Mesopotamia's fate unfolds under the watchful eyes of both gods and mortals. In the heart of the ancient city of Nippur, a momentous event occurred 4,123 years ago as Abraham, a figure whose name will echo through the annals of time, entered the world. Born amidst the whispers of celestial destinies and earthly legacies, his birth marks the inception of a journey that will shape history. Enlil bestows the esteemed lands of Shem into the capable hands of Nana 4,113 years ago in a celestial decree of great significance. Yor, the resplendent city, is proudly declared the capital of this new empire, its walls echoing with the grandeur of a bright future. As the throne of Yor finds its rightful occupant in Yor Namu, a visionary ruler, he is honored with the title, Protector of Nippur. This recognition marks a pivotal moment in the cosmic hierarchy. From the ancient city of Nippur, a wise and revered priest, Terah, father of Abraham, embarks on a journey to Yor, where he acts as a liaison with the royal court. In this tale of diplomacy and cosmic interactions, the destinies of gods and mortals intertwine, forging a path that will leave an indelible mark on the pages of history. Yor Namu, hailed as the Might of Nana, met a tragic demise on the battlefield 4,096 years ago. In the chaos of an unnamed and distant battleground, fate took a cruel turn as Yor Namu's chariot became ensnared in the unforgiving mud. He was cast off, abandoned on the battlefield like a shattered vessel, while his chariot sped away like a tempest. The heart-wrenching tragedy unfolded further when the vessel carrying Yor Namu's body back to Sumer sank in an unknown place, swallowed by the relentless waves with him aboard. The gods, once revered, seemed to have turned a blind eye. Nana did not extend his protective hand, Anana did not wrap her noble arm around him, and Utu, the valiant, did not come to his aid. The perplexity deepened as the gods appeared to have stepped aside, leaving Yor Namu to his bitter fate. The sense of betrayal lingered, questioning why Lord Nana, Anana, and Utu had not intervened when the hero's destiny was sealed. The bitter lamentation accused the great gods of altering fate, with Anu modifying his holy word and Enlil deceitfully manipulating the decrees of destiny. Amidst this uncertainty and turmoil, Terra, the wise priest, makes a profound decision. Along with his family, he departs from the land of Yor, setting a course for the ancient city of Haran. This journey becomes a pivotal moment in their lives, a testament to the enduring human spirit and the enigmatic dance of fate that guides their steps. Shulgi ascended to the throne of Yor 4,095 years ago, his leadership marked by a vision of unity and strength. Under his rule, the empire flourishes as he forges robust ties with distant lands. Yet, amidst the grandeur of his empire, Shulgi's heart is ensnared by the irresistible charms of Anana, 
a radiant and powerful presence. Their passionate connection transcends the boundaries of duty as he becomes her devoted lover. In a strategic move, Shulgi extends an offer to the Elamites, granting them the city of Lhasa in exchange for their service as his trusted foreign legion. This alliance marks a new chapter in the Empire's history, where diplomacy and military strength are intertwined. This is a tale of love, power, and strategic alliances. Shulgi's reign intertwines the destinies of gods and mortals, creating a narrative that reflects the multifaceted dimensions of empire and ambition. A remarkable chapter in the annals of ancient Egypt unfolded 4,080 years ago as Theban princes, staunch in their loyalty to Ra, embarked on a determined journey northward. Under the leadership of the formidable Mentuhotep I, they sought to extend their influence and unite the lands of the Nile. Meanwhile, Nabu, the valiant son of Marduk, emerges as a charismatic figure in the expansive regions of Western Asia. With his charisma and wisdom, he gathered a steadfast following, strengthening his father's cause and spreading the influence of Marduk across the vast expanse of the ancient world. This is a narrative of ambition, leadership, and the enduring power of celestial legacies as they shape the destiny of lands and people throughout the ages. At the behest of the celestial Nana, 4055 years ago, Shulgi, the vigilant ruler of Yore, dispatches the formidable Elamite troops on a crucial mission to quell the unrest brewing in the Canaanite cities. These elite forces, driven by cosmic purpose, journey through the vast expanse, reaching the very threshold of the Sinai Peninsula and its enigmatic spaceport. The arrival of the Elamites at this celestial gateway marks a pivotal moment in the ongoing drama, where the intersection of terrestrial and cosmic forces unfolds in the heart of the ancient world. It is a tale of power, destiny, and the ever-advancing reach of human and divine ambitions as they converge at this critical crossroads. In the land of the Hittites, an intriguing turn of events takes shape 4047 years ago as Abraham is entrusted with a momentous mission. With authority and vision, he is ordered to lead an elite corps of cavalrymen to the southern reaches of Canaan. The journey is a testament to the divine guidance and earthly ambitions that shape their destiny. Shalgi, reclaiming the esteemed title of King of the Four Regions, embraced his role as the heroic sovereign of Yor, ruler of the revered Four Regions, and the favored one of the God who judges. Adored by Anana and the occupier of Der Elu, Shalgi commanded the construction of the formidable Wall of the West, to safeguard the lands of Mesopotamia. However, his reign faced turbulence, lasting only one precarious additional year. Despite Shulgi's persistent proclamations as the cherished of Nanar, the divine favor he once held as the chosen of Anu and Enlil began to wane. The celestial record disapproved of Shulgi's actions, citing that he failed to uphold divine regulations and tarnished his righteousness. Stepping onto the throne of Yor as Shulgi's successor was his son, Amar Sin, inheriting a kingdom poised at the crossroads of divine favor and earthly challenges. This cosmic shift in leadership has far-reaching consequences, setting in motion a series of events that will shape the course of history. During his extraordinary journey, Abraham ventures to the enigmatic land of Egypt, where he remains for five years. Upon his return, he arrives with a bolstered force of troops, reflecting the enduring interplay between nations, power, and cosmic destinies. This is a narrative of adventure, kingship, and the ever-evolving tapestry of human and divine interactions as the legacy of Abraham unfolds against the backdrop of the ancient world. Under Anana's celestial guidance, the wise and resolute Amar Sin forged a formidable coalition of kings from the east 4,041 years ago. United in purpose, they embark on a grand military expedition, their sights set on the coveted lands of Canaan and the enigmatic Sinai. At the helm of this mighty endeavor is Kador later, 
a renowned Elamite leader whose valor knows no bounds. As they march towards their goals, they stand at the gateway to the sacred spaceport, where Earth and the stars merge. However, Abraham, a figure of unwavering determination, blocks their advance, positioning himself as a sentinel of this earthly threshold. In this moment, the fates of nations and celestial powers converge in an epic clash that will redefine the destiny of the ancient world. This is a tale of alliance, valor, and the interplay between human and divine destinies as they stand at the threshold of the celestial realms. Amar Sin, redirecting his focus to Eridu 4038 years ago, the city of Enki, boldly established a regal abode and embraced priestly duties in this sacred domain. In the subsequent year, Amar Sin embarked on a journey akin to Sholgi's, setting sail to the enigmatic place of the ramp. However, his quest abruptly halted in the land of flying for life. There, destiny took a cruel turn as Amar Sin succumbed to the venomous sting of a scorpion. In the wake of Amar Sin's untimely demise, the mantle of kingship passed into the hands of his brother, Shu Sin. The throne, a seat of power and divine intricacies became a stage for the continued saga of Mesopotamian rulers navigating the delicate balance between earthly endeavors and celestial forces. With a sense of duty and determination, Shu Sin takes up the mantle of leadership, seeking to guide the realm through a time of transition and transformation. In the second year of his reign, Shu Sin endeavored to win Enki's favor by crafting a unique boat designed to navigate the high seas and reach the enigmatic lower world. However, the endeavor faced apparent failure, leading to a shift in focus during the fourth and fifth years. During this period, Shu Sin directed the construction of a colossal wall on the western frontier of Mesopotamia, strategically aimed at deterring incursions by the Westerners, followers of Marduk. Turning to the revered deities of Nippur, Shu Sin sought divine guidance through the raising of an extraordinary stela honoring Enlil and Ninlil, a monument unlike any built by previous kings. However, Enlil, the chief deity, was notably absent, and only Ninlil, his spouse, remained to hear Shu Sin's entreaties. Responding with compassion, Ninlil granted Shu Sin a powerful weapon that radiated with awe-inspiring flashes, destined to safeguard his well-being and extend the duration of his rule. Under the counsel of Ninlil, Shu Sin commissioned the creation of a grand touring boat for the divine couple, adorned meticulously with precious stones. The boat symbolized divine grace in the expansive basin facing Ninlil's house of pleasure. Upon learning of these developments, Ninlil hastened from horizon to horizon, rejoicing with his beloved queen, Ninlil. Yet, the narrative took an unexpected turn as the concluding lines hinted at Ninurta, the great warrior of Enlil, intervening after discovering an inscription, potentially an evil curse, on an effigy within the boat. Amidst these celestial events, a total solar eclipse cast its shadow, becoming an ominous omen, according to the oracle priests of Nippur. Their written message foretold a dire fate for Shu Sin, warning that his wall would crumble and Yor would be plunged into desolation, a prophecy that echoed through the corridors of uncertainty. It's a narrative of change, resilience, and the enduring spirit of an empire in the face of shifting cosmic tides as the legacy of yore finds its place in the annals of history. A new chapter unfolds in the storied history of yore 4029 years ago as Ibi Sin ascends to the throne, succeeding Shu Sin. It's a time of transition and change as the celestial spotlight shifts again. Ibi Sin, the final king of Yor and son of Shu Sin, faced the encroaching turmoil from the west. Raiders clashed with Elamite mercenaries in Mesopotamia, casting a shadow over Sumer's heartland. Soon, Yor and Nippur found themselves besieged, their people seeking refuge behind protective walls. Nana's influence dwindled to a small enclave, creating a vulnerable space for the return of Marduk, who seized the opportunity to lead his followers back to Babylon. Placing his trust in Nana and Inanna, Ibi Sin assumed the role of high priest in Inanna's temple in Uruk. Despite these efforts, ominous omens warned of impending judgment on Yor. Seeking divine strength, 
Ibi Sin undertook the additional role of High Priest of Inanna at her shrine in Yor. Yet these measures proved futile. As the sixth year dawned, urgent omens foretold the entrapment of Yor's inhabitants. A prophecy spoke of a figure arising from the west, calling himself supreme, signaling a second coming. This very year, hostile westerners breached Mesopotamia's plains, swiftly seizing the great fortresses without resistance. As foretold, Marduk returned to Babylon for the second time. Seeking guidance, Marduk consulted an oracle in Hatterland, determining that the time for his return had come. In the 24th year, a favorable omen marked the completion of his exile, and Marduk set his course for Babylon. The joyous occasion included the reconstruction of his temple, Esagila, and the establishment of his everlasting abode. The narrative alluded to Marduk's intent to chase away evil, bring motherly love to mankind, and restore order. However, amidst these celestial events, the holy city faced despoilment, and its shrine, the Ikor in Nippur, was desecrated. While Ninurta accused Marduk's followers, it was revealed that Era, Nergal, not Marduk, was responsible for this sacrilege. Upon learning of the destruction of his temple, Enlil rushed back to Nippur, radiating brilliance as he descended from the skies. Enlil sought justice and questioned his son, Ninurta, who falsely accused Marduk and his followers. As tensions escalated, Enki stood by Marduk, questioning the continuous opposition from Era. In the face of Enki's support, frustrated Nergal departed from Enki's presence, resolving to unleash devastating weapons upon the lands. His destructive plan aimed to turn cities into desolation, flatten mountains, agitate seas, and make the people vanish. Alerted by Gibble, Marduk learned of Nergal's scheme, culminating in a prophecy of doom in 2024 BC. It was a tumultuous era marked by divine conflicts, destructive methods, and the impending nuclear holocaust, the year of doom that signaled the end of Ibi Sin's reign and the final chapter of Yor's illustrious history. With unparalleled power, Nergal and Ninurta rise to the occasion, obliterating the spaceport and the wayward Canaanite cities. It's a tale of conflict, divine will, and the enduring consequences of cosmic decisions, as the destiny of the ancient world hangs in the balance. In the fateful year of 2023 BC, the winds became unwitting messengers of doom, carrying a radioactive cloud to the land of Suma. A catastrophic shadow descends upon the ancient realm as people succumb to a harrowing and untimely demise. The very essence of life withers as animals perish, waters turn deadly, and the once fertile soil transforms into a barren wasteland. Suma, once the beacon of a great civilization, now lies prostrate, its splendor eclipsed by the overwhelming devastation. However, from the ashes of this tragedy, a new legacy begins to take shape. At 100 years old, the remarkable Abraham begets a legitimate heir, Isaac. In this act of resilience, a torch of hope is passed down through the generations, a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity in the face of the most formidable challenges. It is a narrative of rebirth, legacy, and the indomitable human will as the story of Sumer finds a new chapter in the lineage of Abraham's seed. The Anunnaki gods systematically departed from earth after the destruction of Sumer. But where did they go? Confirmation of what many had suspected was found in the 1970s. On the historic date of July 20, 1976, as Viking 1 gracefully orbited Mars for the 35th time, it turned its lens toward the enigmatic plains of Sidonia. In the profound stillness of space, frame 35, 72 unveiled a mesmerizing sight, a colossal plateau that appeared, in all its majesty, to harbor a mile-wide countenance resembling that of a human. It was the famed, face on Mars. However, the revelation was not met with the expected fanfare. NASA dismissed the discovery as an oddity of light and shading, a mere play of cosmic chiaroscuro. However, the saga took an intriguing turn when Viking 2 photographed the Martian soil on September 3, 1976, a considerable 1,800 miles closer than its predecessor. Enterprising space engineers Vincent Dipetto and Greg Molinar, driven by curiosity, 
delved into the archives of Vikings' photo files. Their meticulous scrutiny unearthed a clandestine treasure, the Martian Sphinx. These celestial anomalies persisted in the cosmic dance of light and shadows, leaving a trail of questions etched in the annals of space exploration. The face on Mars and its enigmatic companion, the Sphinx, stood as silent sentinels, challenging our understanding of the cosmos and beckoning humanity to unravel the secrets concealed within the Martian tapestry. In a captivating twist, the intrepid engineers meticulously enhanced the unearthly photographs, unraveling a revelation that transcended the bounds of mere Martian landscapes. A colossal, five-sided pyramid lay in proximity, adding an extra layer of mystery to the Red Planet's secrets. Enter Richard C. Hoagland, who boldly declared that the Martian terrain known as Sidonia harbored more than isolated oddities. According to Hoagland, Sidonia cradled the remnants of an ancient Martian city adorned with pyramids meticulously aligned in geometric precision. In the Cosmic Chronicles, a visionary narrative emerged. Richard C. Hoagland postulated that these Martian structures were not haphazard creations but deliberate remnants of a civilization predating our own. According to Hoagland's bold claims, the Anunnaki had established cities and bases on Mars nearly 450,000 years ago before making their way to Earth. The face on Mars, a resolute sentinel in the Martian expanse, became more than an anomalous visage. It transformed into an ancient marker, a celestial signpost erected by the Anunnaki. It stood as a testament to an ambitious project that unfolded eons ago, a project that spanned the evolutionary journey from Homo erectus to the emergence of Homo sapiens. It is this city that they fled to when they left our planet. What happened after that is a story for another day. Today, legends speak of a celestial homecoming, a cosmic reunion with the realm they once influenced. Across millennia, anticipation lingers as stargazers and scholars ponder the celestial tapestry for signs of their imminent return. The cosmic dance awaits the reappearance of these enigmatic entities, weaving the threads of mythology into the fabric of our collective destiny. Will the Anunnaki once again grace the earthly stage, their return shrouded in the cosmic mystery that captivates the human imagination? We trust you've liked this captivating journey through history. Thanks for watching, as always.